Hello and welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses and today we are going to talk about grafts. So oh, I'm so excited. So let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that maybe let's talk about grafts. This is my visual of a patient's arm with three different kinds of grafts in it. And it's kind of like this. This is the left arm. Left arm, forearm. What do we know about grafts? We know that grafts is a synthetic tubing placed in a patient's arm so that we can put two needles in to perform dialysis. How grafts are different than a fistula. Let's pretend that this is a fistula. Let's say we got an artery and a vein. A fistula is just tied. It's everything is made of their own. There's nothing for, foreign put in the patient's body. So it's tied and then there's gonna be increased blood flow to make this fistula nice and fat. The difference with the graft is it's put in and it is as fat as it is going to get. So it does not need six weeks to, to mature. It really just needs two weeks so that the surgical incisions can heal. What I've seen with grafts over the years is I've seen a horseshoe shaped graft and usually there's like a surgical incision site on each side of it. And that's kind of where a fistula has an anastomosis, maybe just one that you have to be two finger widths apart, you'll probably have two surgical incisions with a graft. Another one up here might look like this. And then I've also seen these where they're kind of pointing towards the armpit like that. The synthetic tubing of a graft is thicker. This is just the needle that I cut off the needle. But I feel like these are really similar to uh, grafts. It's a it's synthetic tubing and it feels harder than just a regular fistula. When you push down on the graft, it's going to feel hard and you're going to feel like the tubing there where a fistula is a little, a little softer, right? Other things, some things that you need to know about grafts. Number one, you never, never, never use a tourniquet on a graft. Grafts are the size that they're going to be. They're not like our blood vessels that can get bigger and smaller depending on what's going on. So if you use a tourniquet and this graft gets too fat, you can cause damage to that graft. Uh, the other thing for that same reason, you never use clamps on a graft either because it just holds too much pressure and it can really just constrict the blood flow. No tourniquet, no clamps. So let's take a look at this graft. The biggest anxiety I have with grafts is knowing the direction of the blood flow and this visual is going to help you so much. I'm so excited. So here I told you which way the blood is flowing. So I kind of cheated, but this is going to help with the, with, with the visual. If the blood is going this way and then I restrict blood flow here, I clamp down on here, this side of the graft is going to get nice and fat. It's going to get harder. It's not going to be collapsible because the blood hits a roadblock. And sometimes you really have to push down hard to get an accurate assessment, but just kind of like I said before, don't do it for too long because you can cause damage. So hold that pressure, feel one side of the <clears throat> fistula, and then that other side of that fistula is going to be flat and collapsed because that blood is going away and it's not getting filled. That is how you know the direction of the blood flow. The other thing when compared to grafts and fistula is that this tubing is thicker and that the vessel of a fistula is thinner. So when you put those needles in, for example, when you put this needle, so when you put the needle into the fistula, you can just pretty much put it in and you're in and you can advance it. It's, it's real easy to get inside the fistula. Where I find that I struggle with um, grafts is I forget that they're thicker. So when I, when I put this vessel in, I feel like I'm in there, I see the pulse, and then I just wanna level it out. Where with a graft, you need to really, let me see if I can get any closer here. Anchor this tubing, I'm gonna anchor it, and I'm gonna go in. I'm going in, and here, I might be able to get a little bit of blood return there, but I'm not quite in, so I just need to, and then I kind of feel it go in. So then, this is easier than cannulating balloons. So here, I got a little hole there, but I'm able to get blood return in there. One of the things I found with grafts is that there seems to be sometimes scar tissue buildup in the graft where I'll, I'll put my needle in here, I'll do it. I'll put my needle in here and I'll feel like I'm in there and I know I'm in there. I feel that I am in that graft, but I lose my bounce. 
I lose that pulse. And this is something that a patient told me. She's like, there's scar tissue in there. You just kind of have to push through. And I'm just like, what, are you sure? So I just trusted what she had to tell me. And I, I got there, I felt resistance. I lost the pulse and I'm just like, oh, I am in this graft, what is going on? And she's like, push through. And then the bumps came back. And that has really changed my life as far as grafts go. Grafts are super cool. A lot of patients like grafts because of the two, especially people that want to get rid of their catheter because grafts we can start using in two weeks where fistula is six weeks. Um, why one person has a graft versus a fistula, that's not really something I can speak to. That is definitely something that's up to the discretion of the vascular surgeon. I had one patient who had a graft, we used it for years, it clotted, it, they weren't able to declot it, and then he ended up getting a fistula placed. So that was, I thought was kind of interesting. So just because somebody has a graft doesn't mean they always have a graft, and sometimes when a fistula fails, they'll have to go to a graft. I've seen people go back and forth, especially people that we've really struggled with getting vascular access in where like their fistula keeps clotting or they had a graft and it keeps clotting. I find that the, the vascular surgeon might go between a fistula and a clot. It's just not, it's not just because they have a graft, they're always gonna have a graft. It's just really kind of depends on uh, the vascular surgeon's assessment. All right, let's talk about grafts. What else about grafts? Hmm, this one might be kind of easier to assess which way the blood's flowing. This one I have the hardest, I'm gonna flip this around. Let me flip it around. This one I have the hardest time assessing because I, usually I think it's going to go one way and it ends up the other way. So sometimes with this one, I have the arterial needle on top and the venous on the bottom. So it's just, it depends on the anatomy of the patient. So that is why don't just assume, you know, which way the blood is flowing. Assess, assess that graft and ask for help and talk to the patient. And that's really my quick take on grafts. I don't really have a lot to add. A lot of, I have a great video about fistulas if you wanna know more about fistulas. The three takeaways I want you to take, three takeaways I want you to take is grafts are usually ready in about two weeks. You cannot use a tourniquet and you cannot use clamps. And in order to figure out which way the blood is flowing is you need to hold pressure on that fistula. If you haven't done it before, get someone to help you because I, I still ask for help. I've been doing this five years. I'm a certified dialysis, dialysis nurse, but it's I need I need help finding this. So, all right, thank you everyone for watching this short but informative video about graphs. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. dialysis machine. What the heck are they? How do they work? Why do we use them? I'm going to answer all of those questions and Mr. Potato and Gary the Beta are going to explain osmosis to us. That conductivity profiles are one of the coolest things that the dialysis machine can do and one thing that is going to help you so much is that conductivity is just a fancy dialysis term for sodium and sodium is just a fancy word for salt and what do we know about sodium and salt wherever sodium goes water goes so conductivity profiles uses that property of sodium and also the property of diffusion and osmosis to help pull fluid off of our dialysis patients okay are you guys ready so step number one we have a high conductivity profile we have a high sodium profile in our dialysis let's say it starts at 150 our blood sodium level is 138 140 so using the rule of diffusion sodium is going to move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration until it becomes equal the salt is going the sodium is going to move from the dialysate across the semi-permeable membrane of the dialyzer into your patient's bloodstream okay that's diffusion next we're going to go see mr potato and gary and they are going to show you how sodium uses osmosis to pull fluid off of our dialysis patients Let's go. Here we have the potato that represents the patient's edema, their extra fluid. And in the middle of the potato where all of the sodium is, that represents the bloodstream that we flushed with sodium. With the rule of osmosis, the water, the fluid is going to move from an area of low concentration of sodium to an area of high concentration of sodium. 
until it equalizes. As time goes on, you can see that the fluid from the potato from our patient is moving into the bloodstream where our machine can take it. What I like about this picture of the potato is that you can see how dry the potato is. You can see that the water moved from the potato into the bloodstream.